Welcome to Strategies for Working with Roadway Capacity. My name is Rick Wilson. I'm a professor in the Department of Urban and Regional Planning at Cal Poly Pomona. In addition to being a professor, I have a transportation consultancy and have focused on travel demand management and parking reform as part of my work. Early in my career, I engaged in battles with traffic engineers over road widenings in urban development. So this course is especially close to my heart. So let's introduce this subject by addressing the, the issue of road capacity enhancement. In the post-war era, the default approach to transportation problems was to build roads. And that approach has changed significantly. It's gone from the go-to strategy to almost an outcast where some planners and transportation planners would argue against any improvement to roadway capacity. There are reasons for that position, such as the notion that we can't build our way out of the problem. That term refers to the idea of induced demand, that building roadway capacity often produces more travel demand and does not deliver the congestion reduction promised. But there are other issues with adding roadway capacity that relate to sustainability, air pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, social justice issues associated with a automobile first transportation system, and livability in terms of how our communities function for us. So one question that I would like you to consider as we go through the course is, should roadway capacity ever be increased? Should it be decreased? These are the tricky questions that transportation planners are addressing in our current era. Course contents are as follows. First, we will examine the traditional notions of road networks and how they function. And then we'll review some of the thinking behind the supply first era in transportation planning. Then we'll address traffic flow efficiency strategies, ways of getting more out of existing roadways. Because road diets are a hot topic, we will address roadway reallocation strategies as well. And finally, we'll discuss active management of curb capacity, which has become an important issue with goods delivery and transportation network companies. And we'll conclude the course by creating a framework for addressing this question of when should we add, leave alone, or subtract roadway capacity. And you can see in the images two contrasting uses of road right-of-way. The bottom, the classic suburban road right-of-way configuration, and at the top, a road that has undergone a road diet and cycle track improvement. So why this course? This course is important because we need to have some clarity on when and when not to add to roadway capacity. The capacity as default first approach is discredited, but the answer to these questions lie in the broader vision for land use, economic development, environment, and social justice. So let's begin.